Hiya guys, Nigel here with you again, and it's a lovely sunny Friday morning. Um, just going to do a quick video now. I've seen a video done recently um, by well, Yellow Cake is one of, one of the sites I saw on one of the channels, um, where people are finding that the, when they've clear coated their model and they come to do their decals, decals, the setting solutions they use are actually attacking the paint. So I thought I'd do a little sample here and see what's going on. So. This is my uh, junky old wing, as you know. This is the 132nd scale Hunker 111 wing. And now you don't have to do this, but I always clear coat before I decal decals because basically if you've got a nice smooth shiny surface, you've got a lot better chance of not getting any silvering. If you've got a matte finish or it's a little bit stipply or whatever, then it's practically unavoidable to get around the silvering issue especially if you're using thicker decals like Tamiya or whatever so basically I've got here this is that wing which has got all sorts of different paint and decals underneath it and everything I've gone over it and I did it on the 8th of the 12th at 1900 so it's today it's the 10th of the 12th so this has been about 40 hours it's been on here it's had to dry so you know 40 hours should be adequate so on here we've got on this end here, you can see we've got the MRP Super Clear Gloss Varnish. And as you can see, it's not very glossy. That's because it's a very hot lacquer, or pretty hot lacquer, and it's kind of etched into the paint below. Um, so if I give it another coat, it would probably be a lot glossier, but I wanted to keep it e equal, you know, let peg in for all of them. What I've done is one quick coat, left it for two minutes, and then another quick coat, and another quick coat, and that's it. Okay, and then let it dry. So that's the MRP. This one here is X22 mixed with um, Mr. Color Leveling Thinners. As we can see, that's the shiniest of the bunch. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, then here we've got the Aqua Gloss, Alclad 2 Aqua Gloss, which is awesome stuff. Really, really good. This one here is the new Modeler's World, which I've yet to try out in a preview. But I just thought I'd give this a quick go. And this is uh, through the airbrush, straight out of the bottle. I think it needs a bit of thinning, which is why I've got now the... Um, the Acrylic Doctor, which you've seen me do a review on. If you haven't seen that, go back and have a look. It's basically an acrylic thinner that thins all acrylic paints, and it's really good stuff. So this is the, yeah, that's the Modeler's World Gloss. This one here is Alclad, not to be confused with Aqua Gloss. This is an Alclad 2 lacquer, uh, clear coat gloss. Now, this one, I believe, is enamel base. If you didn't see me using it, go back and see my Vulcan build when I started doing the weathering. And uh, basically, I used this thinking it was an acrylic lacquer it's not um, and then on the end here we've got the polyurethane gloss varnish from Viejo which is not very nice stuff at all um, it goes down it's yeah so basically what we're going to do is two scenarios here one we're going to weather our model using enamels so we're using oils so we've got enamel thinners okay and we've got odorless thinners here so we're going to use those two and put them on and see if they actually attack the paint at all. And then we're going to use our different decal setting solutions. And we've got here, I've got the set and sole, micro set and micro sole. Okay, which I think are going to be absolutely fine on all of them. We've got the decal set from MIG. I've only got number one, I don't have number two. So we'll see what that's like. I've got the, actually I'll use this one first. Uh, Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer. Now I did see that when, um, when the guy on Yellow Cake models <clears throat> use this stuff I think it affected his paint which is what got my ears pricked and then this one here Mark Fit. I've just got this in from China a little while ago I haven't tried it yet but um somebody did say to me I, I, I mentioned I'd got it in a video and somebody said be really careful it is uh, pretty pretty powerful stuff and it'll dissolve your clear coats so first things first let's imagine we're going well actually no, let's do it in the order we do it in first thing we do is do our decals before we do any washes or anything so first one here let's do the first one here it's going to be our micro set and the sole. So we know pretty much that these are going to be okay. It's a pretty pointless exercise, really, to do this. But um, basically, I'm going to take my brush, okay, and I'm going to go into the micro set. I'm going to brush that on there, brush that on there, brush that on there, on there, on there, and on there, okay? And I'm going to brush it about a bit, agitate it a bit. That's just not fair to do it on there. There's an old decal under there. So what we'll do is we'll do it here where it's only painted. And we'll see if it's going to damage it at all. And as you can see, 
we've got no reaction whatsoever. Sometimes you will get some discolouring, you get like a white mark where it's been. I think you can see there it's sort of changing colour a bit. But um, that's nothing to worry about. Once it dries, it disappears. So I'll just get that off of there and then we'll get some microsole on here. Let's see if that's going to affect it at all. Of course, the unknown. Whoops, what am I doing? Not sure what we're dipping it in then. There we go. I'm sure these are going to be absolutely fine, really. Really, I am. Um, but basically, just agitate it with a finger a bit, work it in there. It's not doing anything. It's not affecting it at all. As you can see, I've got nothing coming off. It's not damaging it at all. I know it's not going to damage the aqua gloss because I've used it a million times. It's not damaging the VA ho, it's not damaging the alkalad, so we're good to go there. So we know then that the we know that the microsol is not damaging anything at all. There is no effect on there whatsoever. There's no dulling, nothing at all. Okay, and the model has rolled has been absolutely fine. So all I've done there is made it smell of vinegar. So right. So that's that. So let's move on to the MIG. As I said, I've only got this one. So I'm sure this will be fine as well because I'm sure this is just the same as um, is the micro set and so on. I'm sure it's the same stuff. You've got MIG ammo and AK. They seem to be sort of remarketing everything on the planet. You know, they, they bring out all these fantastic products, give it a new name, and it's a lot of it is the same as we've already got. But, you know, they're still good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying, you know, that there's no real point in buying that rather than that. The only reason I've got this is because when I went to the shop, they had none of this and I was out. So I bought a bottle of this instead. And then as soon as they got this back in, I bought some more. So that's the only reason I've got that one. Um, but there we go. It's not affecting it at all. So there we go. That's absolutely fine. Nothing at all. So let's have a look at the Mr. Mark Softer. See if that's going to affect it. Nothing at all by the look of it. It's not even got any surface tension. So, absolutely fine. As I say, this is the one that got me, because if you look at the guy over on Yellow Cake Models, I think this stuff actually affected his paint, which I found very strange. Okay, so, leave that on there for a... Sort of work it in. I don't think it's affecting anything. The model is rolled is fine with it. So we can see the. We can rub that in as hard as we like, and it's not doing anything. It's not affecting it at all. Nothing coming off whatsoever. Not sticky to the touch. Hasn't stained it. Nothing at all. Okay, so let's try the Mark Fit. Now this one I think is going to be a different story. So we'll put some on here. Put some here. Put some here. A bit too much there. Okay, and then just the same as the others, we'll leave that on there for a second. And then we can give it a bit of an agitate. Ooh. Well, you can see straight away it's attacked the it's attacked the Viejo, which is this one here, the polyurethane gloss varnish, because it's peeling up, it's rolling off under my finger. See that there? It's just rolling off. Okay. Doesn't seem to have affected the Alclad. Looks okay on the old clad. It's attacked the modeler's world. You can see I can leave fingerprints in it there. So it's kind of reset the modeler's world. So obviously not going to use it with that one. The aqua gloss. Yeah, it's effect. Oh, has it, has it or not? I'm not sure. It has slightly affected it. Maybe if I put some more on there and leave it a little longer. Oh, we got the 
Mr. Colour Eleven of Thinners, and again you can see it's attack that with X22. I can leave finger marks in that one. As you can see, I'll leave finger marks in this one. And the MRP is unaffected. So put some more on there just to really give it a test. So it doesn't seem to affect the old clad at all. That's that one, not the aqua gloss. Um, Yes, it has affected the aqua gloss. You can see it's lifted it right off there and down to the paint. So um, if I rub this with a cloth, you can see it's actually ripped right through the clear. But the MRP remains pretty much, there is some staining there and it has made it a bit sticky. You can just see some staining there. So really, this stuff is a waste of time because you can't use it with anything. Um, the only one it looks like it's unaffected by is the Alclad, but we'll come to that in a minute, which is another issue. So you can see that it's, it's really done all them in. So really, that, I don't know, I guess you could use it on um, 2K, um, you know, 2 pack clear. It probably won't affect that, but this is, uh, so it's a definite no-no with the um, polyurethane. It's affected the Isle Cloud, it's definitely no no for, for the Modeler's World, definite no no for the Aqua Gloss, definite no no for X22 and Mr. Cut 11 Thinners, and a no no kind of for the MRP. Um, I think if you didn't hang it around too long, it'd be okay, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely marked the MRP. Just to make sure, we'll get that on there and let that work that in a bit. I mean, you would never work it like this on your model, but it's just worth seeing if it's going to attack it. It's. I think you'd get away with it. I think you'd get away with using this with MRP clear gloss. In fact, if anything, it's polished it. <laughs> so there we go. Okay, so the only one it looks like it's okay. The only two that are okay, the MRP and the Alclad, all of the rest of them are a no-no. So we've got our model all deckled up. We've decided we're not going to use the Mark Fit. We could use all the others with no issues and we're absolutely fine. So let's come along now and put an enamel wash on it. And this time in our oil wash, we're going to thin it with enamel thinners. Now, enamel thinners is pretty hot stuff. So you've got to be a little bit careful. So we'll put some on the polyurethane varnish. We'll put some on the Alclad. Modelers World, X22 and the MRP. Okay, and get it nice and wet and let it do its thing. And we'll see what happens. So, MRP looks unaffected. Mr. Colour Level of Thinners looks unaffected, which is what I was expecting. Aqua Gloss should be unaffected. Hodler's World should be unaffected. I say that because these are all acrylics. This one, yeah, it's lifting it. The old clad is being lifted. And the polyurethane feels like it's being lifted as well. No, it's not. It just feels that way. The old clad, you can see, is being lifted. You can see it's going through to the paint underneath. So it's no good for that one. The Modeler's World, it has slightly affected it. But these here are okay. All right, so that's that's the first test. So the Modeler's World is just slightly affected. You can see I can just leave a fingerprint in it. It's like it's only dried for two hours rather than four hours sort of thing. But that is, it's taken that right off and the others are unaffected, okay? But you wouldn't normally use this for a wash anyway. If you do, stop it because it's not good. Um, it's very, very hot. I, I used it once on some tracks that I glued together, link by link tracks, and they fell apart because it attacked the glue joints. So you're better off getting yourself some odorless thinners. You can get this one. You can get this Modeler's World one from Premium Hobbies, which is nice. The beauty of this one is, as with I think all the Modeler's World products, it doesn't smell. So... 
that's a big advantage. So with this one, what I'm going to do is give my brush a good wipe and dry off, and then we'll give it a swirl in there. Okay, so this is odorless thinners now. So it's basically, it'll do exactly the same job as enamel thinners when you want to make your wash. But as you'll see here, I'll, I'll put it there because it's already stripped it there, isn't it? Brush this on here. Put it low down so that we're not going over the same area. Okay, and obviously it's odorless, so it's not as smelly. It's, it, they call it odorless, it's, it's low odour, it does smell. Um, it smells more than the um, Modeler's World one. But um, it's not as hot. You can also use lighter fluid, you get lighter fluid in a can. You can use that as well to thin your enamels, but only in small areas because it dries so fast. So the X22 I know is going to be unaffected, MRP is unaffected, Aqua Gloss unaffected, Modeler's World unaffected, Alclad is lifting it, and then the polyurethane seems to be unaffected. Now the Alclad it seems to be lifting it. What I'll do is I'll take a clean, clean area of the cloth. Okay, so there's a clean area there, and as you can see, it's lifting it, it's removing it, okay? Take another clean area of the cloth on this one, nothing, another clean area, nothing, no, it's absolutely fine, and then these I know are going to be fine because I've used, I've used that, this over these many times and not had an issue, so, so there we go. So basically, right, if you're going to use this, okay, this I found this out the hard way, if you look at my Vulcan build, as I say, if you're going to use this, it's fine, but don't go over with an oil wash afterwards, because it's basically, it's uh, enamel based, okay, so the, all of these thinners will attack it, alright, so if you're just going to brush a wash on and leave it, it'll be absolutely fine, but if you want to do like a streaking effects and stuff, it'll just take all the clear off, so... Don't use that if you want to use any oils. Um, it would appear that if you want to use this one, it would appear that you're going to be okay with MRP, but the others are a definite no-no. So really, this is pretty pointless stuff. Um, because, you know, if you've got to use a clear coat under your decals, I've got pretty much all the clear coats here, and it, it attacks them all. So, what's the point? Um... Other than MRP, it doesn't seem to have attacked that too much at all. So maybe the MRP is the way to go. All of the other decal setters I've got here, the Micro Set and Sol, the uh, MIG, the Mr. Mark, they've all been absolutely fine. So, um, yeah. So there's our little test. Now, as I say, I saw this from Yellow Cake Models and he did some tests. And he had, he had this stuff eating the paint. I don't know what's going on there. But, um... There we go. So now we know. So keep this video in mind. Um, you may want to refer back to it for future reference. But um, I can tell you now that this stuff here is... I got it because it looked really good. And I wish that I wasted my money because it's not, not really much use. So um, there we go. So uh, watch this space for more reviews and tests. And I've got to do... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing a new video soon about... Um, Natural metal finishes. I'm, I'm all prepped and ready for it. In fact, I may even do it today. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.